this uh, girl. Uh, she, her name is Ismail, uh, Amal Ismail. Uh, she is eight years old. She and her family left Syria when their uh, home was almost obliterated in an airstrike. They made it as far as Cyprus. That's where she is now. And uh, the, the question is, how should international policy respond to Amal? So three mainstream ways of uh, thinking about how she should be addressed by policy that I think we need to really move beyond. And one of them is, well, uh, she and her family should be simply adjudicated. Uh, do they uh, qualify as, uh, as uh, refugees for resettlement out of, outside of Cyprus? Should they qualify as asylees in Cyprus? If they don't, they should be simply sent back to Syria. That's not adequate in her, in her case because uh, she, she is not a refugee or, or, uh, and does not qualify as an, asyl as an asylee. Uh, you can tell in my uh, description of how they left Syria that she, it wasn't that they were targeted because of a well-defined social group they belonged to or because of their political beliefs. They just left because the world around them was shattering and they were almost killed. And uh, I think for many people, that's a good enough reason to leave a country and want to build a future uh, elsewhere. But it disqualifies you uh, from being a, a, a technically a refugee in international law, according to a definition that was fashioned 10 years before the cassette tape was invented quite a while ago, uh, and, and uh, really fundamentally hasn't changed uh, since. A, a policy for the 21st century would uh, uh, need to be fashioned to address her needs. Uh, what are the needs of people uh, who are leaving due to climate change, due to famines, due to uh, uh, extreme poverty, due to natural disasters, hurricanes, earthquakes? None of these people are, are uh, addressed by the, the common framework of international law that we have right now.